Accusations of an electoral coup in the Democratic Republic of Congo after Felix Tshisekedi is announced the winner of the presidential vote. Will there be a peaceful transfer of power? Could this mark a new beginning for the country? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Fully Batibo. A two-year wait for a new leader has come to an end in the Democratic Republic of Congo, but already a post-election crisis is brewing. Felix Tshisekedi, the leader of the largest opposition party, has been declared the winner of the long-delayed presidential election to replace Joseph Kabila. But a second opposition rival is denouncing the result as an electoral holdup, and Martin Fayulu is calling for protests. Now, the provisional results from the Electoral Commission show just under 39% voted for Felix Tshisekedi, the leader of the UDPS. Martin Fayulu of the Engagement for Citizenship and Development Party was second with nearly 35%. Third with 24% was Emmanuel Ramazani Shadari, the hand-picked candidate of outgoing President Joseph Kabila. A voter turnout was 47%. Only around 18 million out of 40 million eligible voters cast a ballot. So, who is Felix Chisekedi? The 55-year-old is the son of Etienne Chisekedi, the longtime opposition leader and founder of the Union for Democracy and Social Progress, who died two years ago. Felix spent his early life in Brussels, where he became a UDPS activist. After various roles in the party, he inherited the leadership last year. Now, if his victory is confirmed, Chisekedi will only be the second leader to take power through the ballot box since independence from Belgium. He is promising to fight corruption, return the rule of law, and end fighting by rebels in eastern DRC. We'll bring in our guests in just a moment, but first, Al Jazeera's Haru Mutasa has more from Kinshasa. Outside the party headquarters of Felix Chizakedi, it is a carnival atmosphere. His supporters are busy celebrating. They say they hope that his win will be a new beginning for the country and signal some kind of new direction in terms of economic recovery. All of us, we have not the job. We have many studying. Every young here, we have studied, but we have not the job. Now, with Mr. Tisekedi, we, we are sure that we will have the job in this country and our country will go forward. In other parts of the capital, Kinshasa, the mood is more subdued, more quiet. Supporters of Martin Fayulu say they really fear that Chisakedi made some kind of deal with President Joseph Kabila, which ultimately will see Kabila pulling the strings from behind the scenes, effectively still running this country. And they fear that Chisakedi will end up becoming a yes man who just does what he's told by Kabila. He also has other challenges, of course, in terms of the rest of the country. There's the economy he has to deal with, he has to create jobs. He has to also bring in pr private investment as well. He also has to deal with the Ebola outbreak in the east of the country. He has to deal with unrest also in the east of the country between militia groups and some government forces. I suppose his immediate, his immediate biggest challenge is, of course, trying to unite a very divided country. He only won by 38.5% of the vote, which means a lot of people didn't vote for him. He has to now prove to as many Congolese as possible that he's going to be a leader for everyone, not just for his supporters. And I suppose also also importantly, to convince people who are suspicious of him, who don't trust his motives, that he's going to be his own man and he won't be a puppet of President Joseph Kabila. Harumutasa for Inside Story. Well, let's bring in our panel now. From Geneva on Skype is Benedict Joko, a Congolese historian and coordinator of the Likamboya Mabele movement, a civil liberties organization. From Paris, Al Kitenge, political consultant and economic analyst and CEO of Innovation Task Force. And in London, Indigo Ellis, risk consultant at Verisk Maplecroft. Welcome to the program. Thank you for being on Inside Story. Benedict in Geneva, how credible are the election results released by the Electoral Commission? Well, I think that we uh, just heard the news that the uh, Catholic Church uh, said that the result uh, do not uh, correspond to what they have observed. So I think that uh, the election, as they call it, of Mr. Chisekeri, uh, is a problematic one. And if um, the 
the, the Catholic Church uh, bring uh, the numbers, uh, I think that uh, this pres president uh, will have a serious problem of legitimacy. Al Kitenge in Paris. It's true that the Catholic Bishop Conference of Congo, whose preferred candidate is not a secret, it's Martin Fayulu, uh, says it made verifications and has results that are totally different from those of CENI, the Electoral uh, Commission. Who, in your view, has the right, the correct results that represent the will of the Congolese people? Um, I'll be very clear with you. Uh, I think this uh, process has been all very chaotic. And I'm not surprised to have a result that gives room for discussion. So uh, today we are in front of uh, what I call official body, which is SENI, which says that Mr. Chisekedi has uh, won this election. And apart from that, we have another group who says, unfortunately, this is not the data that we have. I would say that beyond people, beyond um, election, we have management of the country, which is, to my point of view, the most important thing. At the end of the message from the Catholic Church, they say if a part of the election says that they, are not, they don't agree with the results, they can use the legal uh, framework to try and contest the results. So I hope that this is going to be the, the right way. Indigo Ellis in London, your thoughts. Uh, is this win by Etienne Chisekedi, who leads one of the biggest and oldest uh, opposition parties in the DRC, is it really a shock? Was this election stolen from the Congolese people, as Martin Fayulu claims? I think ultimately what we are seeing here, um, and Varys Maplecroft will support this, is that we are approaching this this age, basically, where this, this uh, Chisekedi's win has been completely uh, fabricated. Essentially, what uh, although the opposition has won and it's in some ways the right result for Congo, we have not seen Shadari being forced into a position where the Congolese people have definitely did not vote for him. What we've seen is that Tish Skedi has won, but it is still not the correct result. I think that's very clear. I think the most important thing to remember about these results is ultimately they are provisional. Mm -hmm. um, there is no guarantee that these results will be the final results. There's mm -hmm. no guarantee that a constitutional challenge will not be confirmed. I think that's the most important thing to remember as we're talking about this. A right. lot of um, media have been talking about Tish Skedi winning. Right. But actually, they in are fact, provisional what we're results seeing is indeed. that he's actually just been the provisional. Right. Yeah, if, exactly. if these results stand as they are today, if they stand, uh, what would that mean? How, how high is the risk, uh, Indigo, of, of violence today if these results stand? I think actually what we've seen with Senko coming out recently and saying that they do not agree with these results, I think that is important. Um, but ultimately, the most important thing is that the UDPS, who, who to be honest, feel the most um, feel the most militant of the street activists that we'll see definitely coming out in Kinshasa. I think it will be a lot less um, a lot less violent than we expect it to be. Um, ultimately. Uh, um, it doesn't mean that the civil arrest will not be as widespread. I think uh, Martin Fiulu's uh, kind of his support is spread wide across the country. Mm -hmm. And that will mean that nationwide there will be civil unrest and it will be violently repressed by security forces. I think that's very m made clear with the history of Congo as it stands. Yeah. Benedict in Geneva, uh, as Indigo points out, and very important to insist on this, these are provisional results. They're not the final official results. Uh, in his very first reaction, though, Felix Chisekedi praised Joseph Kabila, uh, the outgoing president, saying he considered him an important political partner and not an enemy. Was there a deal made between Kabila and Chisekedi, in your view, as Martin Fayulu is accusing them? But uh, I think that some of us, and um, maybe many of us, have read uh, several journalists um, uh, pointing uh, that uh, aspect, you know, of uh, these elections. And um, this, this is really a big problem, I think, for Congolese people, because if we uh, go on with the um, president uh, who are uh, suspected of not uh, have won the, the election, this will create even more instability in the country. And um, this election with Mr. Chisekedi in a certain way, uh, I think, was seen as a way uh, for Mr. Kabila uh, to uh, gain legitimacy uh, because uh, his 
um, his election, as he says, were disputed in 2006, in 2011. And uh, if, if uh, the, the election of Mr. Stusikedi was not disputed, it would have confirmed mm. that he was indeed once the president of the Congo. So I think it's really important to think about the history because we see today uh, people, of course, some of them, not all the country, and I think it's important to insist on that, uh, that are rejoicing, but uh, we need to think about uh, the history of Congo, the history of those elections, and uh, a, a, a president that lacks legitimacy in that country uh, will not foster peace. Alkitenge in Paris, do you agree with that? With this, does this victory, if it's confirmed, does it benefit Kabila in any way? Uh, the most important thing is that Kabila is a citizen of Congo, so there is life after. Uh, the seat. So I think we don't need to frighten whoever in this country. It's maybe the time for us to learn from his mistakes and make sure that the country learns from it and then do better. I do believe that it's more important to look at uh, beyond the election. We, we had campaign. Now we have results of, out, out of the elections. If it's confirmed, there will be a need of governance, which is the most important thing. Uh, with, and, uh, or with or without Kabila, this country will still exist. So whoever comes, we need to understand that the nation is behind the people. All right. Uh, Indigo, your thoughts on this? There, there have been a lot of accusations of Kabila and Chisekedi uh, making a deal prior to these uh, election results being announced. Is that the case? And if it is the case, once the results are confirmed, what role for Kabila in any future uh, Chisekedi government or the future of the DRC? I think um, ultimately what we've seen is that it's become co it's completely untenable for Kabila to do his intended, let's say, call it plan A, um, of putting Shadri into power um, after an unfair and rigged election, because there is no doubt that these elections were going to be rigged, they were going to be unfair. The most surprising thing, obviously, is that it's been Tish Sakedi that has, who's now been appointed this string puller. I think there's no doubt that um, Tish Sakedi will be this, this kind of puppet. The only question is that the puppet master is the same, but the puppet has changed, rather. So Shadri was going to be the puppet, and now it's Tish Sakedi. Yeah. There's undoubtedly been some kind of backroom deal created, um, how far it will be, succeed, whether we'll see some kind of Morsi um, transition where if, if, he, if Tish Sakedi puts up quite a lot of fuss when it comes to uh, promoting what Kabila's uh, tried to do, then that will be the issue. Um, how it plays out, the transition, also what of Vital Kamere, what role will he take? Absolutely. Um, he was an important partner for Tish Sakedi in the election. Right. That's the ultimate thing. Uh, Alki Tenge in Paris doesn't agree with you, Indigo. Al, your response to that? <laughs> no, no, I absolutely, I absolutely don't agree because uh, this is just a lack of understanding how Congo is organized. Uh, we had three elections in one, and uh, we are not even mapping what are the results at the uh, provincial assemblies. And the coming soon is the election, sorry, mm -hmm. the result of the election of the National Assembly. This will determine who is going to lead the country, because we are a parliamentary organization. The, the power in one man's hand is completely finished. Even Chiseked himself knows that, per constitution, he will not have the same power than Kabila. The power will be with the prime minister and the government. That's what the constitution, constitution says. Unless people think Chisekedi will act and operate just on the same way that Kabila, which I think would not be uh, any, any way possible in Congo again. It's important that the international community understand that this is a game changer. This transition is something very important, and we will have a decentralized country, and we will have a power in different uh, um, institutions. All right. Speaking of the international community, Al, and I'll allow you to respond in just a moment, Indigo, I want to play you a, a soundbite from the French uh, foreign minister who doubts these provisional results. He says they appear to contradict other tallies. Take a listen to Jean-Yves Le Drian. The elections were carried out with calm, which is great, but it appears the results declaring Mr. Tshisekedi as the winner do not conform with the results that we've noticed. The Episcopal Conference of Congo made checks and announced results that were completely different. Firstly, I think people should remain calm and avoid confrontations, and clarity should be made on the results, which are opposite to what we expected. All right, Benedict uh, in Geneva, how do you interpret this reaction from the French foreign minister? Did France have a preferred candidate in this election? Yeah, well, uh, when France is speaking, I think that uh, we need to understand that they speak uh, about their interests. 
In 2011, I think that we had uh, other elections in the Congo where the Congolese people were saying that uh, there were uh, the, the, the vote was stolen once again when uh, uh, Mr. Chisekedi's father uh, ran for the elections. Uh, Congolese people have been calling France and the international com uh, community uh, to help them uh, get back their vote. And France didn't even answer. Uh, France, uh, Mr. Hollande, I think uh, at that time, uh, didn't take time to listen to the, uh, to the plea of the Congolese people. So I think that for France to come today and talk about this election, even though we know that they are problematic, even though we know that in Congo there is a problem of, uh, of word and, and, and trust uh, with, with the elections, uh, things that politicians in the Congo do not respect most of the time. We know we have this problem, but I think it's, uh, it, it's a little bit uh, uh, awkward, I would say, for France to come today and tell us about that. Mm. It is true also that for France, maybe a person like uh, Mr. Bemba or Mr. Katumbi, uh, who, were, uh, who were together with Mr. Fayulu, yeah, are a better person because they will secure the business. And we know that uh, most of Western countries, uh, when they talk about the Congo, they mostly don't talk about the people. They mostly don't talk about the sufferings of the, of the Congolese people, but they're talking minerals, they're talking deals, and uh, maybe... Yeah, Mr. Fayulu if you know, was a better man for them, okay. and uh, that's why they, they take this stand. Let's hear from Indigo on this. Uh, Indigo, uh, Benedict says France is speaking there out of interest. What about the rest of the international community? Did they have a preferred candidate? Ultimately, I think the international community wanted to see a peaceful electoral process that reflected what the ballot box actually said. And I think that's where um, Martin Fiulu became the preferred candidate. As soon as Senko came out and said that they, they thought that he was the winner, I think that's ultimately the, the, uh, the, what, the, uh, what the international community were looking, were looking for. Um, I think Benedict's right. The way that the um, French, the way that Congo will re react to this French ministerial uh, statement is not going to make a huge difference. I think France uh, has lost a lot of respect within the Congo. They, they do not wish to have a repeat of the 2011 election, um, where France came in and sent uh, election observers. I think the ultimate question is whether um, what the UN will say tomorrow. So South Africa, in their role, uh, their new role in the Security Council, have managed to push back the meeting on the Congolese elections that was due to take place on Tuesday. They've, mush they've pushed that back to tomorrow. So I think the ultimate uh, kind of international community response will be tomorrow. We'll see mm. what they want to say, how they will respond to this. Ultimately, I do not think that they will say anything other than we accept this result, because it is not uh, very clear that Kabila has had a hand in this. Yeah, it'll to the be interesting observer. to see how the international community reacts to the unfolding situation. In the meantime, let's take mm -hmm. a look at the challenges facing Congo's new leader. If Felix Tshisekedi's win is confirmed, he faces many challenges. Although the Democratic Republic of Congo is rich in mineral resources, it's home to some of the poorest people in the world. The United Nations says ethnic fighting between government forces and armed groups has displaced more than 4 million Congolese. Chisekedi is vowing to tackle corruption. Mining profits were allegedly stolen by groups with links to President Joseph Kabila. So, Al Kitenge, lots of challenges, not least the security challenge in the East, the humanitarian challenge as well. Uh, does Felix Chisekedi have what it takes to deal with these various issues? Uh, what should be his main priority? I think the main uh, and the most important thing in Congo is to be able to manage and to, uh, to give governance to the, to the country. Uh, we have a huge part of the country which is com completely undermanaged and no uh, administration. I mean, the first thing uh, the government should try and do is to try to bring services to the citizens wherever they are. We have 80% of our population in a rural area with no service at all. And that's where we have these uh, armed groups, because these abandoned places. And I think the first thing the government should do is to try to bring services to those who have been unmanaged for so many uh, years. Second thing, we need to give activity, economic activities to the people, because with no activity uh, in, the, in the rural area, we'll have this kind of uh, informal economy, this artisanal mining, which brings money to the wrong routes and then which gives money to the rebels. 
And I think it's important for the government to have a plan for the next 15 years to make sure that we know where we want to go. Today, mm. that's the most uh, difficult thing. We don't have a strategic plan. I think we need to have a strategic plan. Benedict in Geneva, does Felix Chisekedi have a plan? You know, it's very difficult not to associate him uh, with his father, Etienne Chisekedi, the longtime opposition leader. Uh, he, Felix, has little political experience, uh, drawing his political legitimacy from his father, Etienne Chisekedi. How difficult will it be for him to govern uh, in the shadow of the his father does it does he have what it takes to lead the DRC I think that uh, we need to um, maybe uh, remind ourselves of something that Etienne Chishlikedi said when uh, he was fighting Mr Kabila um, most of his supporters and he himself uh, said about Kabila uh, that people uh, should take Kabila Mr Kabila uh, and uh, send him back to Rwanda and I think this is an important thing to say here because what Mr. Chisekedi's father was saying is that Congo was at war. And uh, I think that to say today, to talk about economical development, to, to talk about people that need effectively to, to, to indeed to, uh, to be taken in charge uh, without talking about the war in Congo, it's a kind of, it, it's problematic. Mm. Because this is the main challenge that Mr. Chisekedi is going to face. How he will, how will he end uh, the war in Congo? Because the war is still there. It's a low intensity war, but it is still there. We had a mapping report. We had Mr. Uh, Mukwege, the Nobel Prize, who spoke about what was happening in the Congo, the rapes of the women, uh, the, women the, 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 the children that were raped, uh, were killed, and all these minerals that are robbed from our country. Uh, and uh, we know the influence that neighboring countries have, like Rwanda uh, in particular, right. that played a really, really uh, bad role in that region. Let, and me, that, uh, and that, let me bring uh, Indigo back pressure, into the conversation. Uh, that put pressure on the Congo. So this will be, I think, one of the main challenges of Mr. Chisekedi, how will he end the war in the Congo? Because we can't talk about economics, you can't talk about, uh, you can't talk about social problems sure. uh, to uh, before Benedict. you solve that problem. And elections in the Congo today are not a response to the war. Okay. And I think that this is an important thing to to say and know about the Benedict, Congo. Benedict, uh, I'm going to bring in uh, Indigo because we're almost running out of time in the show. Indigo, Benedict says you cannot talk about economic development in the Democratic Republic of Congo unless you solve the security situation in the East. Uh, your thoughts on this? And also, Felix Chisekedi has said he would uh, fight corruption, he would release political prisoners, return exiles. On the issue of corruption and good governance, do you see him going after Joseph Kabila and his family? At the moment, here at Veris Maplecroft, we just do not expect that Tish Kedi will have the political power to be able to m kind of manipulate the, the, the vassals of power enough to m move anything away from Kabila or his family. Um, essentially, we, we see a situation where if Tish Kedi is confirmed as president, he will just remain behind the scenes. Uh, sorry, Kabila will remain behind the scenes behind Tish Kedi as he rules. How long that situation will last is yet to be seen. When it comes to economic versus uh, ending the war in the eastern provinces, the most important thing will be infrastructure. Uh, there is no possible way that economic development can happen without improved in infrastructure. There is no way that people can be brought into the formalization of artisanal mining, for example, without infrastructure. There needs to be more investment in roads, um, in, in hydropower plants. We've seen Inga 3. Tish Skedi will need to prioritize that if he wants to even come close to, I think, raising the capital needed to end the war in the eastern that. provinces. Because money yeah. is going to be How do important. You do that the country is Benedict, I'll give you the last word. Go on. No, I said that how do you bring infra, uh, infrastructure in a country when you didn't solve the, secu uh, the security problem? Because I think that it, it is important today to, to talk about that question. Because we cannot let more than 6 million people uh, that were killed uh, just in, in, out there without, without talking about them, okay. without uh, claiming justice for them. Lots of questions. And, and, and I think this is, this, this is really an important issue here. Lots of questions to need to be answered. We're going to have to leave it there, unfortunately, because we've run out of time. Thank you so much. A lot of questions and a lot of issues need to be addressed by the Democratic Republic of Congo's new leader. Thank you so much for being part of this discussion. Benedict Joko, Alki Tenge, and Indigo Ellis. And thank you as well for watching. You can always watch this program again anytime by visiting our website at aljazeera.com for further discussion.
discussion, go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also, of course, join the conversation on Twitter as well. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Fully Batibo, and the whole team, thank you for watching. Bye for now.